The sunray Venus clam, Macrocalista nimbosa, is named for its radiating shell pattern. Native to Florida, this clam is found in high salinity areas with sandy substrate. Fished recreationally since the early 1900s, commercial fisheries interest in the 1970s sparked basic culture research. Interest in hatchery production of this attractive clam resumed in 2006 with the support of Florida Sea Grant. Previous research determined that broodstock sunray venus clams can be conditioned like the hard clam, Mercenaria mercenaria, with one exception, they require a sand substrate. Consumer acceptance of this clam is high, as is commercial production interest, due to the high value this clam commands. However, commercial hard clam hatcheries report inconsistent spawning success when following maturation and conditioning protocols. This led to a Florida Sea Grant sponsored project in 2018 focused on refining conditioning requirements to achieve consistent spawning success. The purpose of this short video is to share techniques that we have found lead to more consistent spawning success based on replicated trials conducted at the Florida Atlantic University Harbor Branch Experimental Bivalve Hatchery from 2018 to 2020. The importance of conditioning time, feed rate, and temperature is discussed, along with suggested conditions to increase spawning success. Broodstock conditioning systems consisted of five foot diameter tanks containing two to three bus trays filled with four to five inches of sand. 15 to 25 clams were placed into each bus tray. Tank salinity was maintained at 26 to 28 parts per thousand. The time of year in which sunray broodstock are collected from the wild determines ripeness and maturation conditioning time. Clams collected in the summer or winter are not as ripe as those collected in the spring and will need more conditioning time. Clams collected in the spring can easily be conditioned in two months, while those collected at other times of the year may need three to four months of conditioning. Attempting a spawn without considering the importance of conditioning time will result in frustration and failure. Although we were able to spawn sun rays in all four seasons, we had less success with clams conditioned in winter and spawned in spring. Winter conditioned clams had a lower rate of spawning success, fewer fertilized eggs produced, and lower survival to D stage. Increased conditioning time, regardless of temperature or feed rate, increased the chances of spawning success, but not necessarily the number of fertilized eggs or survival to D stage. Sunrays are subtropical clams. Hard clams are typically conditioned at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. We compared sun rays conditioned at that temperature to a lower and a higher temperature. Twice the number of fertilized eggs were produced at 70 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit compared to 64 degrees. A 25% increase was seen in D-stage survival at the two higher temperatures. Hard clams are typically fed at a rate of 4% of dry meat weight. The average wet meat weight of sunray brood stock used was 2.5 grams, with an average dry meat weight of 0.46 grams or 460 milligrams. To determine the amount of algae to feed, you will need to know the average dry weight of a million cells of each algae species you will feed. For T. iso, that is 20 milligrams, and for Catoceros, that is 30 milligrams. Here is an example of the calculation to determine a 4% feed rate for T. iso per broodstock clam. Three feed rates, one lower, 
and two higher were compared to a 4% feed rate. We determined that a higher feed rate resulted in increased spawning success and increased survival to D stage. Heart clams that have been conditioned for two to four months are prolific spawners, with 80 to 90 percent of the clams placed on the spawning table producing gametes. This is not the case for sunrays. As fewer sunray broodstock produce gametes during the spawning, we recommend the hatchery personnel increase the number of clams placed on the spawning table by about one-third. Spawning trials were conducted with approximately 30 clams for replicate treatment. This should be considered the minimum number of clams hatchery personnel should place on the spawning table, especially as was the case in our project, sex of the clams had not been predetermined. Temperature induction was used during spawning trials. Three to four cycles of 30 minutes each, cold and hot temperature phases beginning at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and ramping up to 88 degrees was used for each spawning attempt. Salinity was maintained at 26 to 28 parts per thousand and no sperm was used to induce spawning. We found that 28% of the time clams spawned on the first cycle and 72% of the time on the third or fourth cycle, always during the heat phase. In a typical spawn, twice the number of males produce sperm compared to the number of females that produced eggs. I'd like to leave you with one extremely valuable tip. Don't give up. 50% of the time ripe sun rays will not spawn on day one. Try again on day two. Do not put them back in the conditioning system after an unsuccessful day one attempt. Instead, place them in a loosely tied bag, dry, in an air-conditioned room overnight. Based on data collected during this study, we recommend the following conditioning protocol. Place 15 to 20 clams in sand trays and maintain at a temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit and a salinity of 26 to 28 parts per thousand. Condition clams for two to three months and feed at a rate of 6 to 12 percent of clam dry meat weight. This research was supported by the Florida Sea Grant College Program and was a joint collaboration between Florida Atlantic University and University of Florida. A copy of the full report, Building Hatchery Capacity of Production of a Promising Shellfish Aquaculture Species, the Sunray Venus Clam, can be found at this website.